Hey guys, so a few months ago, I asked you guys, what did you want to see from me? Some of you said you wanted me to go more in detail about the home buying process. Some of you wants to do, want me to do more story times, which is surprising because I haven't did one in at least a year, but I'll attach the last one to this video. And um, some of you want me to go deeper into the fertility process. So I aim to please. So here's the first video of that. And this is about understanding your credit in order to prepare yourself to buying a home. Back in 2016, my wife and I made the conscious decision that our next move was going to be in our house. It didn't matter if it was going to be a new bill or if it was going to be an existing, we were back going to buy a house. We got to the point of being tired and frustrated of putting so much money into our landlord pockets and repairs on the property still wasn't being done. Um, he's going on vacation and our money is just flying out the window. And before we can start that process, the first thing we did was pull our credit. Pulling your credit when you're buying a home is very important. I recommend you do that before you talk to a lender because you would rather not have a lender pull your credit just to tell you, ooh, girl, mm-mm, 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 no, 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 you can't buy a house. You don't want that. So pull your credit yourself. That way you can know what's going on. You could try to fix those things yourself. And if you can't fix those things yourself, you can hire somebody to fix those things. I am a former identity theft victim. My identity was compromised years ago. It took me a total of 10 years. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten years to fix all of the debt that the thief did to me. It was like over $500,000 and I couldn't understand it because some of the accounts that they had open, I couldn't even open myself. So I was like, what is going on? And so as an ID theft victim, I'm here to tell you before I get deeper in this video to protect your identity. Identity thieves do not need your whole social security number in order to commit fraud against you. In some cases, they do not need your social at all. I had accounts on my credit that was linked to me solely by my name. So please pay attention to your credit. If it's anything that's on your credit that you do not recognize, contact the credit bureaus, do it in writing, okay? Um, if it's addresses on your credit report that does not belong to you, contact the credit union, the credit bureaus and attach proof. That proof can be formal leases, mail, whatever. Pay attention to your credit. Once you get your credit, go down to collections or any derogatory credit and see what you have. When trying to buy a house, a lender do not want to see any late payments for one year. A lender do not want to see any collections for one year. You have to have one year of good credit, meaning no lates, no missed payments for one year. And you need three, at least three trade lines. Um, so it could be your car notes, if you have a car note. Um credit card if you have a credit card and then maybe you have like you could do what my wife and i did we went to our credit union and we got a secured loan so they gave us a little loan and we pay it back and that those can be your three trade lines but you need three trade lines that's having revolving payments that's showing active and current for 12 calendar months before a lender will give you a loan even if your credit score is 700 but your credit has only been good for the past three months you still would get denied so pay attention to that okay I told y'all I, I got notes so if you see me looking down i made notes um find all your derogatory accounts now here's where it gets tricky some people would tell you don't pay the collections They'd be like, oh, don't pay them because legally you don't owe them. You owe that company. So don't pay them. Okay, that's cool. But if you do not pay them, it's going to stay on your credit. And the longer it stay on your credit, you're not going to be able to get the things you need. You may still be able to buy a car with it on your credit, but you buying that car with more money down and a higher interest rate. So if you had owe someone and they send it to a collection agency, Pay the agency. And the, one of the reasons why I'm telling you to pay the agency because 
most of the time, a collection agency will offer you a buyout. Say, for instance, if you owe a T-Mobile $600, a collection agency will be like, um, we'll settle that debt if you just pay us $280. You pay it, it'll show as paid on your credit report, but it'll still show on your credit report. If you have the funds, if you have the total 600, contact T-Mobile and say, hey, I want to pay this debt I owe you all and give them the total 600. Because versus paying the collection agency, which shows paid, and that'll boost your credit up a little bit, it still will show on your credit. If you pay them the total amount directly, you can also request that they remove it completely off of your credit report, which is going to make your credit skyrocket, okay? That's the thing. Um, if you have any debt reporting to your credit, um, medical bills, maybe you still owe... AT&T back when they were singular about wireless. If it's been over seven years, your credit report will tell you the date that they added it to your credit report. If it's over seven years, send the credit bureaus a letter in writing requesting they move it, remove it. They have to remove anything off of your credit after seven years. Okay? Hope that makes sense. Now, once you do all of that, you fix your collections, you fix the derogatory payments. Now you're looking like, oh my God, I fixed all this stuff, but now nothing is reporting to my credit. No credit is worse than bad credit and not having revolving credit is 10 times worse than bad credit. So now you need to get some credit. Now, if you do not have any revolving credit on your credit report, it's going to be difficult to go to Capital One or Visa or MasterCard or Southwest Airlines and say, hey, girl, I need a credit card. They're not going to give you a credit card because you don't have any revolving credit. You don't have anything reporting to your credit for at least a year. They're not going to give you a credit because they cannot see your payment history. Okay? So what you will need to do is to go get you a secured credit card. A secured credit card is just, um, you basically pay the credit limit. Capital One has a great secured card. That's who I used at the time. Um, now I have a regular card with them. I can't believe it. But I got a secured card first. I paid Capital One $200. They gave me a credit line of $200. It posted to my credit. That little $200 credit line boosted my score by 35 points. I paid it on time every month. And every time I paid it, my credit score went up and up and up and up and up and up. And up. Just like that. Okay? Not only did I did that, I went old school with it. I listened to my mom. My mom told me to get a Finger Hut account. I went to Finger Hut. I got approved for like $200. I brought this Bluetooth speaker. I paid $20 on it a month. No missed payments, no late payments, and my credit score skyrocketed, okay? Highly suggest doing that. Those are some easy ways to boost your credit. Another way you can boost your credit this may not work for a lot of people. You really have to know somebody that completely trusts you. Maybe hit your Nana up and say, hey, Nana, I need your help. Ask somebody to add you as an authorized user to their credit card that they already have. And if you got a granny that's willing to do it, that's the best because, you know, the grannies, they be having the high credit limits. So if granny got a credit limit of $10,000 and she adds you as an authorized user, user on the account every time she pays her credit card it'll report to your credit too you don't need to have a copy of her credit card you don't need to have a card of your own but just being on hers is going to help your credit those three simple steps a secure credit card a finger hut account being somebody's authorized user or if you with the credit union um I recommend being a credit union member, get one of their secured loans and have them four things, 
three or four things, report to your credit every single month for one year. I guarantee you, your score will go over 600 just like that. But in order for that to work, you have to take care of your collections and you have to take care of any missed payments. If you have a missed payment, like you missed a payment on your car, girl, contact your your car loan people contact GM and be like hey girl um, remember that missed payment I had back in December girl um, is there any way you can remove that from my credit re report even if it's temporary your girl trying to get approved for a house sometimes they will do it it does not hurt to eggs just eggs but I guarantee you if you do those simple things for one year, remember, it has to be done 12 months. You have to pay those revolving credit on time every month. No missed payments for 12 months. When them 12 months is over, you're going to be able to go to any lender, any bank, any credit union, and get approved for a home mortgage.